Making thin strips on the table saw safely and accurately. For DVDs, drawings, tools, and project articles, please visit my website at AmericanFederalPeriod.com. I need to cut thin, accurate strips to make the cock beading. And I used to do this at the bandsaw because it's safe to cut thin strips at the bandsaw. And there I would plane the edge of a board square, set up the fence to cut it slightly over the desired thickness, run it through, and then depending on what mood I was in, I'd use the thickness sander or the surface planer to bring it down to the precise thickness. The thickness sander was more predictable and had a 100% success rate, but it was quite a bit slower. The thickness planer needed a little bit of test cutting and even when you pick straight grain stock, which you should pick for cock beating, I would get a piece that would uh, shatter. And even if it didn't shatter, there would be snipe on the infeed and outfeed ends of it. And we're working to pretty tight tolerances with these cock beating, so that would have to be thrown away. Now the table saw can rip very accurate, consistent strips, but it's really not safe to rip a thin strip between the fence and the blade because it has a tendency to want to kick out. And then, even if it doesn't kick out when it's cut free, it has a tendency to want to fall into the blade a little bit and get marred, and it won't be as consistent in thickness as you would like, and we need that consistency. The ideal is, is to have the piece come off the off side of the blade so that when it falls, it can fall free, presents no kickback hazard, and is not marred in any way. But that requires you to reset the fence for every cut, and how do you do that? with consistency and accuracy. You could, you really couldn't measure that uh, every time and get it with enough consistency. Even though you would come very close, it would have a fairly wide range of thicknesses. So this is not something that I've come up with. I've just adapted a tool in a way that I've not seen anybody else do. First, I have to get rid of the throat plate because mine has got a built-in splitter here and it won't allow the fence to come over like it should. We'll put it back, but we need to get it out of the way for now. And at the heart of it is this tool. It's called a Mighty Mag. It's a tool for machinists. It's a, a powerful magnet built into this base that has various holes drilled in it that you can bolt things to. I use it when I make uh, tenons with a tenoning jig. I bolt a dial indicator here so that I can consistent get consistent, accurate tenons without any kind of uh, test cutting. But in this case, I have bolted a thrust bearing to a bandsaw to it right here. Found that it fits perfectly on that uh, stud there. And that will be the bearing point to come up against the block so that we get a consistent thickness strip. So I start by placing it here on the saw, and it is a very powerful magnet. And I've got a hollow ground planer blade installed in the saw here that gives a somewhat thin curve and a beautiful smooth finish to the cut, almost to the point I can't tell if it's been planed or sawn. And I'll take and tap that over till it touches one of the teeth. And I just want to barely have it touch it. And that's what I want right there. It's just, just barely coming in contact with the edge. Now I will lower the saw blade down into the base and this is why we had to get rid of the throat plate because I need to bring the fence over and have it contact that and I've got a 1970s era craftsman table saw that has a fence that's not the best it's serviceable but as long as I keep the rails waxed it works really quite well so now I've got that just barely touching the fence lock the fence down then I'll bring this back here, a safe, convenient distance away from the uh, blade. And then from the spacer block set, I have retrieved, I've also got a powerful magnet here, so powerful I can't get it off. From the spacer box set, I've retrieved the 1 8 inch spacer, but it's hard to hold that down in there and work at the same time, so i got a, a rare earth magnet that will allow me to uh, hold it in there. And here, I just take and lightly tap it till it touches it. And I just got just the slightest bit of uh, contact there. Now I can take the magnet 
and the spacer block out of the way. And I will have a 1 8 inch thick strip. Now, when I bring whatever width block up to that, I'll put the um, throat plate back in and we'll make a cut here. And I got to move it over a little farther so I can get it in. And we'll make a cut here. And the problem with the surface or the uh, hollow ground planer blade is, is that it does need to be a little bit higher above the work than your typical um, carbide blade. So I'm going to have to set that up uh, where a carbide blade would be good there, about an eighth. I need more like 5 sixteenths, even 3 eighths of an inch to get it to cut at peak efficiency. And I've taken this block of wood and I've already sawn some. So your first one off there will probably not be usable because the chances of you having the edge of the blank as at the exact same squareness, if that's a way to put it, as the saw blade is pretty slim. So you're going to have a piece that's going to be wedge shaped in some way or another. So I'll make sure that I always put one face down and then I can bring the block of wood over to that bearing, tighten the fence down, and I'm going to do an added step that's again driven by my less than ideal uh, fence here. I've got this magnetic base indicator that somebody gave me and I'm going to put that behind my fence and engage the magnet and that just locks it down like you would not believe. So there's not going to be any movement of that. And I want to put my spacer block and magnet over here somewhere safe. And now I can turn the uh, dust collector on and put my face shield on and make the cut and you'll see how the strip comes off very consistent in thickness and safely. I thought I'd show the consistency that that uh, affords on the thicknesses of those strips for the cock beating. And there we've got, that's three thousandths under the desired dimension. And this one is, ooh, that's six thousandths under. Not quite as consistent as I hoped. And that one's five thousandths under. And that one is three, well, yeah, three thousandths under. So that's really, if you take their uh, between three and six thousandths under, so that's only a three thousandths of an inch tolerance. And when you consider that newspaper is three thousandths of an inch thick, that ain't too bad.